Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about printing with Nylon X. Nylon X is a nylon-based carbon fiber filament from Matter Hackers. There's a lot of um, variations on this, but generally speaking, it's a nylon-based filament that has chopped carbon fiber in it. It is extremely high strength, it is really low weight, and so it is perfect for combat robots. I use this filament pretty extensively in the latest version of my 30 pound crippling depression, and I had really good results. Usually a lot of these parts would end up snapping or breaking after every single fight, but I end up going an entire competition with the same part. So, I'm really happy with this and it's showing up more and more in combat robotics. So I wanted to do a video about some of the tips and tricks and some of the settings that you need to know for printing with these nylon based filaments. So let's first talk about some pros and cons for nylon X or most nylon based filaments. One of the big pros is really good layer adhesion. As you can see from some of these parts, you can barely even see the layer lines, and there's really great layer adhesion. Um, this part is 11 grams with only, I think, 20% infill, and it's actually almost impossible to break by hand. I mean, if you really try at it, you can get it to break by hand, but I've tried to break some of these before, and it doesn't even break along the layers. It just kind of snaps um, apart. So you get really good layer adhesion, so that is not Nice. It is also very lightweight. However, some of the downsides is it's much more difficult to print than something like PLA. It's abrasive, and we'll go into this a little bit later, but it will wear out your nozzle if you don't have the right nozzle. It also needs a much hotter temperature, so you will need an all-metal hot end, and it will tend to warp, shrink, and things like that. So you'd have to pay attention to your bed as well. So even though it's a little bit more difficult to print, it can yield a much stronger and much more robust part in the end. It is also a lot more expensive than PLA. Um, you know, it kind of depends on what kind of PLA you're getting, but it is not a cheap filament by any means. It is a more premium, a more expensive filament. So there is a cost element to this as well. Here are a couple examples of some pieces that I printed out of the Nylon X, and you can see it has a really interesting finish. It's kind of like this uh, matte finish to it. Uh, a little bit of layer lines visible here, and if you look on the bottom, it is nice and smooth. So you can get some um, good print out of this. The one thing to note is it is really terrible at overhangs, so you see even a small and simple overhang like that can cause some issues. It's really difficult to even get something as small as that as an overhang. And here is the other part that I showed earlier. So I was having a little bit of printer issues. There are some layer lines right there and right there. Um, but you can see on these um, fillets here, it actually prints really nicely. This little piece was also printed in Nylon X. And this little guy, is really solid, really strong, and it only weighs about two grams, and it's nearly impossible to break by hand. I've never been able to actually break one of these by hand. Uh, so that's one of the strengths haha, of Nylon X, is it's really good layer adhesion, and it can make um, parts like this just really strong and extremely lightweight. So it's really perfect for accessory parts in heavier robots, or full frames, chassis, and um, larger parts in ant weight and beetle weight combat robots. Okay, so Nylon X seems pretty cool. Now the big question is, can your printer print Nylon X or any of these nylon based filaments? Well, the first thing that we need to do is look at the extruder. Um, I use a FormBot Raptor printer, and I've done a couple little modifications to make sure that my printer can handle it. The very first thing that you need to know is Nylon X and um, the carbon fiber based filaments are abrasive. That means when they run through your nozzle, they are going to uh, basically sand away or erode away the nozzle. So if you use a standard brass nozzle, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you're going to have problems. And it's pretty quick, actually. I think um, just even like a quarter of a roll can destroy your brass nozzle. So do not use a brass nozzle with Nylon X. 
Now, Nylon X, as I said before, is a nylon-based filament with chopped carbon fiber. It is the carbon fiber that is actually doing the um, abrasive aspect of it. It's actually what's ruining your brass, not the nylon. So if you're using a pure nylon, you shouldn't have to worry about this. But if you're using one with a carbon fiber or some other kind of glass fiber, you're going to have to worry about the nozzle. I am using an A2, which is a tool steel, an A2 hardened nozzle. They're relatively inexpensive. They're pretty easy to install. You just heat everything up, unscrew the old nozzle, screw in the new nozzle, and you are good to go. So beware of that. If you're going to be printing any of the abrasive filaments, you want to get a hardened nozzle. If you want to go really crazy, you can also get a ruby nozzle, which uses a ruby tip instead of the A2 tool steel. They're a lot more expensive, but they theoretically should last forever, whereas in theory the A2 nozzle you will have to replace over time. It's your call and your money. The next thing that you need to know is the maximum temperature that your extruder can handle. Nylon X needs to be printed somewhere between 250 and 260 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. It's a lot hotter than PLA, which can be printed at like 190 to 210, so there's a lot more heat there. You might need a bigger heater block, uh, maybe your thermistor can't handle the temperature, who knows. This is something you're just going to have to look at your printer and determine if it can do it or not. A lot of the lower end printers might have some issue, the higher end printers meh, may, may or may not, it really depends. Um, but generally speaking, you could just heat your printer up to that see if it handles it well and just kind of go from there um, but definitely that is something to look at because 250 and 260 is definitely on the upper end of the range in addition to being able to handle 250 or 200 degrees celsius you're also going to need an all metal hot end Generally speaking, a lot of printers have a PTFE or a uh, Teflon tube that runs between the actual extruder and the heating block, and that basically lets the filament kind of slip through and then melt inside the actual heating block down at the bottom. Now, if you have a PTFE tube, it's going to melt somewhere around that same temperature and you're going to have an issue. So an all metal hot end actually gets rid of that PTF PTFE liner and has an all metal, eh, you get it? An all metal path through the whole extruder process. You are going to need an all metal hot end. There are some of these tubes that are higher temperature, but most of the ones I've seen are like 260, 270, so you might still run into an issue if you fluctuate a little bit hotter than that. So make sure that you have an all metal hot end, a, an extruder head that's going to be able to handle 250 to 260 degrees and also a hardened nozzle or a ruby nozzle. And that's gonna take care of you from the extruder side. Okay, so you verified that your extruder can handle 250, 260 degrees Celsius, you have an all metal hot end, and you've got a hardened nozzle. Good to go, right? Well, hold on there, Turbo. There's more that you need to know about printing Nylon X. The bed material and that first layer adhesion is very critical for these nylon-based filaments. They will tend to warp, tend to curl, and they have a lot of issues if you don't get that first layer just right. So let's talk about bed material. There are a lot of different ways to get the part to stick to your printer. I'm really only going to cover what has worked for me and some of the things that I've read about. When I first started printing with Nylon X, I was simply using just a glass plate. Uh, this is the glass plate from my CR10 printer, which was the first printer I used Nylon X with. The glass plate worked really well with your good old PVA glue. Uh, this is just good old classic Elmer's washable school glue in a stick form. It goes on purple, dries clear. This is really good stuff, and I'll show you how to apply this later. This and glass, great solution. You need to get it just right, but once you get it right, this works really well. Um, I've also heard that Gerolite is a really good material for printing with Nylon X, so give Gerolite a try if you want. And now I've moved up to using this polypropylene plate. The polypropylene acts very similar to the glass plate when used with the PVA glue. The only main difference is I can unclip this and kind of bend it over the edge of a table or something like that because it does have a little bend, so it is much easier to pop off the parts. You can try that with the glass, but guess what? You're gonna have really bad results trying to bend the glass. So 
I like the polypropylene. It's relatively inexpensive. I think this really big bed was maybe only 30 bucks, something like that. So first choice would be polypropylene with the Elmer's glue. Second choice would be glass. And third choice would be Gerolite only because I haven't tried it. Also, heated beds. I am running my bed at 70 degrees. I've tried 60, I've also tried 50. I found that 70 gives the best layer adhesion for that first layer. It really likes to stick to the bed, and when it cools down, I can pop it off really easy. So if you don't have a heated bed, I don't really know what to tell you, you might have a bad time. I've always used a heated bed, and I've always kept it around 70, and that has always worked out really well for me. There are a couple little things that might also help you out with printing Nylon X. The first off is one of these little silicone boots. You can get these from E3D, get it from Matter Hackers, any other place you can find. And it's just a little silicone boot that sits over top of the heater block and helps insulate it. And what it does is it lets you ramp up temperatures a lot quicker and then also stabilize temperatures a lot better. This was really instrumental for me in keeping it at 250 degrees and also ramping up a lot quicker. Before I got one of these, it was kind of fluctuating around the place and it took a really long time and there was some overshoot. This little bit of insulation is actually quite nice. The other thing that you're going to know is if you have a layer cooling fan, you're going to want to turn that off. What happens with a nylon X or a nylon type material is you have the very warm bed, you have the relatively hot component, and obviously the very hot filament. If you lay that down and then instantly cool it, you're not going to get that layer adhesion, and that's when you're going to get all the warping and curling. So be sure to turn off your layer cooling fan. Now it's time to prepare the bed for printing. I've got my trusty glue stick here and I've sprayed down the bed with some water and wiped it clean so this has absolutely nothing on it. It's just a bare bed. And these instructions are going to be identical between either a polypropylene bed or the glass bed. And I'm only going to apply a small portion of it to the middle just because I don't want to go end to end. This is a relatively large build plate. It's actually really huge, so I'm just gonna do a small area in the middle. So, you just take your glue stick and apply it. I'm also applying this warm, um, it's heating up right now, it's at about 47, 48 degrees right now, and I like to apply it warm just because this dries a little bit faster. So, yeah, that's about all there is to it. So I apply a thin layer, and then I kinda go the other way. And I'll give it a second. You can kind of see, maybe on camera, you can see a little bit of a purplish sheen right here. And when it dries, it kind of goes to a, um, yeah, just like a white film on top. So we're going to just wait for this to dry <clears throat> and no longer be tacky. And then I'll just put a little bit more on there and then we're good to go. So this first layer has dried. Um, you might be able to hear this, but if I rub my hand along here versus here, this just kind of has more of that matte feeling to it. So I'm just going to give a little bit more on top of that. And that's it. Now, the good thing I like about this glue is we can use this patch probably a couple different times, maybe two or three times, and then all you do is put some water on it, use your little scraper, and you can just kind of scrape it up or just wipe it up with a paper towel. So it's actually good for multiple prints, which is really nice. And I like to kind of set the print down inside of this. So I like a thick layer of glue and then kind of melt it almost when you get the filament in there. I'll show you kind of how I do the leveling. And um, yeah, we'll wait for that to dry and everything else to heat up. Bed leveling is pretty critical with any 3D printer, but I found it's more important with um, this nylon filament just because of the want or tendency for it to curl and warp along the edges. So what I found is if you go too high, it's not gonna stick, that's pretty obvious. But if you go too low, um, too far down into the bed to where you get just like, you know, mashed into the bed, that's when you're going to get that curling because that first layer is just under stress almost, too close to the bed, and then on that second layer it's just going to start curling up. So you want this fine balance between being mashed too much in there and then being too far up. And I'll zoom in so you can see what my first layer looks like. Thankfully the form bot has 
you know, this kind of on the fly bed adjustment for the Z-Probe offset. A lot of printers have this similar thing. And I also have one of these um, eh, easy ABL things for the automatic bed leveling. So I think we're all ready to go. Let's zoom in a little bit closer into here and I'm just gonna print a benchy and we'll see what that first layer looks like. Okay, I lied. Instead of doing a bench here, we're just going to do a large uh, calibration cube, mostly just so you can see this layer. The bench was way too small and we couldn't really pick anything up on camera, so this will give you a better idea of what the first layer should look like. There is one last thing that I need to mention about these nylon-based filaments. They are hydrophilic, which means that they have a tendency to absorb moisture from the air. So if you leave them open like this and um, unsealed or without desiccant packs, they will tend to draw in moisture. They will expand a little bit. And if you hear some like popping and crackling when it's running through the extruder, it means that you have excess moisture in your filament. You can get a dehydrator, you can get some kind of um, filament drying system, or you can just stick it in the oven. Uh, check the links down below in the description. I have a couple links for how to do that. In Colorado, where I am, it's a relatively dry state. The humidity is extremely low, so it's less of an issue here, but it is still an issue. And if you live in a very humid climate, it's gonna be something that you're gonna need to pay attention to. Okay, so this video has run a lot longer than I originally intended, so I apologize for that. There's just a lot of little pieces of information I need to get out there. So if you're gonna just skip ahead right to this part, let me give kind of a nice little summary or an overview of how to print with nylon-based filaments, specifically Nylon X. So first things first, it's hydrophilic. It's gonna to want to absorb the moisture in the air into the filament, so make sure it's kept dry. The next thing you need to know is temperature range, somewhere around 250 to 260 degrees at the extruder. The extruder needs a hardened nozzle. It also needs to be an all metal nozzle. You want to print this stuff very slowly. I found around 35 to 50 millimeters per second. Prints really nicely. If you get that down to 25 millimeters a second, the quality will even improve from there. Overhangs are very difficult to print, so avoid overhangs. I had no issues whatsoever with support material, so support material is a go. And then also regarding the bed material, either a glass, a Gerolite, or a polypropylene bed, um, any combination of those should work for the glass and the polypropylene. I had really good luck using the PVA glue sticks. And once again, the bed temperature was about 70 degrees. So hopefully that is everything you need to know to print with Nylon X and other nylon based filaments. I've had really good success with it in the combat robots, um, either in ant weight or beetle weight, and even in my 30 pound crippling depression. Check out the whole damage recap for crippling depression. I'm gonna go into the damage that some of these parts sustained. It was actually pretty surprising that sometimes they held up better than the aluminum parts that were right next to it. So that's pretty cool. I also have a roll of nylon G over here that Matter Hackers provided for me. So I'm gonna be comparing the difference between G, which is their glass fiber based, which is X is the carbon fiber base, so I'm gonna be kind of comparing those in a later video. So hopefully you got something good out of this and hopefully it gives you the confidence to start printing with nylon-based materials. They are leaps and bounds better for certain applications than ABS and PLA. And also please note that the links down in the description are affiliate links where indicated, so that will give a kickback to my channel. So if you wanna help support my channel, use the affiliate links. If not, don't worry about it, just don't use the links. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.